In March 2008, 23-year-old Nikki is working and enjoying her simple lifestyle. How are you guys doing? Very good. Can I make any recommendations for you? I did not want kids. I always said I was going to be that woman who just had, like, lots of dogs. She had all these other plans for her life. Nikki takes precautions to prevent pregnancy. I was on the birth control shot for a little over two years, and then they put me on birth control pill. During the transition, I always used condoms. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Enjoy. All right, Martini. Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. She did the typical things that you do when you're 23, you know, going out with friends. You're getting this one. I would go to this little restaurant slash bar down the street. I smoked cigarettes when I drank. Cheers. Unfortunately, in June 2008, her worry-free life comes to a frightening end. And I just stepped out of the car, and I saw a guy. The man approaches her and asks for directions. Just, uh, I was wondering, like... He grabbed my purse, and then he just took off running. Oh, help! Give me my purse! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got a call. She was just hysterical. <laughs> she said she had just gotten mobbed. Right now, I'm so scared. Steph, I don't feel safe here. He left bruises on my arm. I was really scared. In a chilling twist of events, Nikki would later discover how much worse the mugging could have been. Shortly after, he got charged for murdering a woman. Nick, you're going to have to get out of the house sometime. She was pretty traumatized by the whole thing. I'm not ready. I'm just too scared. She now has trouble sleeping. Even her menstrual cycle seems to be affected by what Nikki assumes is the stress of the mugging. I still had my cycle, but it seemed to be a little bit lighter. By September, she notices other changes in her body. I gained a little bit of weight, not much, like not enough to have to buy new clothes. I'm getting fat. I'm getting fat. In our family, our stomach is the first place we gain weight. On November 26th, Nikki wakes up with mild cramps. I felt like a period was about to start. I was hurting a little, but not enough to cause a dent in my day. Once at work, her cramps intensify. The pain I felt was like menstrual cramps with a sharp pain in your back. Yeah, please, thank Thanks. you. Nikki tries to focus, but the pain becomes unbearable. After two hours of increasing pain, she calls her sister. I need you to come get me at work. I felt like little men were inside of me, stabbing my stomach and my back from the inside. Okay. Stephanie drives her sister to a local walk-in clinic. With a history of cancer in the family, Nikki is terrified of the diagnosis. I'm so worried it's cancer. Cancer? I felt like I was about to die. It was the worst pain I've ever felt. Can you tell me where the pain is? It's my, my lower stomach. After a torturous hour waiting, the nurse finally takes her history. When was your last period? Last month. They asked me when I had my last menstrual cycle, and I told them the month before I had it in October. All right, let's go ahead and have you lay back. Uh, so the doctor, you know, has her lay down, and he takes the stethoscope and puts it on her stomach, and he's listening. It hurts really bad. <sighs> What is it? You're pregnant. <laughs> I can't be pregnant. I'm not pregnant. I'm not pregnant. He tells me I'm pregnant. Are, are you sure she's not just bloated or no. something? No, there's definitely two heartbeats. No, I was kind of taken aback. I mean, I knew that she had had what we thought was her, her period. I argued with him, and then they had me take a pregnancy test. And the doctor told me that I was definitely 100% sure pregnant. I'm not pregnant. It was shocking, for sure. At that point, I thought she must have been a month or two. The doctor told me to go to the hospital immediately because if I was in this much pain, something had to be wrong. I can't be pregnant. Let's go figure this out. Once at the hospital, Nikki is in so much pain she can barely speak. How far along are you? We don't know. We're all thinking I'm just a couple months along. <sighs> they hooked the ultrasound machine up to me. They're like, you're 37 weeks. We were both just in complete shock. Oh. An internal exam confirms Nikki is not only full term, but she's eight centimeters dilated. The baby is coming now. No. I just kept screaming, I can't be having a child. I've been drinking. 
the nurses kept saying, you are pregnant. You are giving birth to a baby right now. Okay, what's going on here? The on-call OBGYN arrives and breaks Nikki's water. The nurses looked at her and, and could see how small her stomach was. And at that point, we all thought there's no way she was full term. It was awful, excruciating pain. One to 10, it would be a 15. Only 30 minutes after finding out she is pregnant and a mere three hours of labor, Nikki vaginally delivers a baby girl. Congratulations. <laughs> Nikki's first question was, is she healthy? Had I known, I wouldn't have, you know, drank any, smoked any cigarettes. In women who smoke, there's an increased risk of childhood asthma, and there's also an increased risk of sudden infant death syndrome. So it's very important to have good prenatal care. In spite of no prenatal care, miraculously, newborn Jocelyn Rose appears unharmed by Nikki's partying. From the second they put her in her arms, I mean, you could just see her motherly instincts take over. Hi. It was amazing. It was love at first sight. I never really understood what that meant until I held her. I got to move to the hospital room. Nikki was so happy. It was just a beautiful sight. So how could Nikki have gone for 37 weeks and not know that she was pregnant? I had seen the show. I didn't know I was pregnant. I kid you not, like two or three days before Nikki had her baby. I never thought that it would happen to us. I definitely didn't have the morning sickness. I never had any crazy food cravings. I never felt her move. Oh, where have you been hiding? I had no clue my daughter was pregnant. She seemed normal and natural and thin. Each woman carries her pregnancy differently. There are women who carry the pregnancies more toward the back of their uterus, and they may not show as much. Nikki most likely got pregnant in March 2008, when she was transitioning from the birth control shot to the birth control pill. And the condom she was using in the meantime most likely failed. When a patient is starting a new birth control method or switching from one method to another, it's important for the patient to use a backup method during those first few weeks. Amazingly, during the entire nine months she was pregnant and didn't know it, Nikki gained less than 10 pounds. Straighten your hips up. Okay. When you don't have the symptoms, when you keep having your monthly cycle, it's hard to know that you're pregnant. She also had some moodiness and inability to sleep. Symptoms she attributed to her traumatic mugging. It's possible that a woman can have a stress that's so bad that she develops significant depression, physical trauma, even disruptive pregnancy. She was really traumatized by the mugging. She was really upset and had a really stressful time. And it's, it's just hard to believe that with all that stress on her physically, mentally, and everything, that she didn't lose the baby, that she managed to hold on to the baby. And still, we had no idea there was any pregnancy going on during all of that. I personally was very, very, very terrified. Like, I would not go back to my apartment. I went back to my apartment to pack my things, and it was during the day, and I had my sister and my brother-in-law's help for that, and uh, stayed with them until I found another apartment in a gated community with security guards at night. And I mean, it was enough to, you know, make me, make me scared of people. I wasn't scared of people before. Looking back, did I think that she might have had some mood swings? But, you know, I guess nothing more normal than any of us any major trauma increases the circulation of stress hormones in the body. And there's some research to show that patients who are very stressed in pregnancy do have an increased risk of premature birth, preterm labor, and or possibility of miscarriage. So although there's not a lot of research to really support it, it goes to reason that increased stress hormones are not good in pregnancy. And in a patient who's had a severe stressful episode, she certainly may be at increased risk of complications. I'm just amazed now to think that she was mugged and, you know, and pregnant and we didn't even know it. It's just a miracle that she was able to get through, not lose the baby. Today, seven months later, baby Jocelyn is the center of their universe. Her whole life changed in an instant, but it was a good change. Jocelyn is so bubbly and happy. She's just a good baby. Nikki is such a great mom, and it's amazing for somebody who never even wanted kids to watch her with Jocelyn. I, I really don't know how to explain it. It's just a miracle. Crazy, weird miracle. <laughs> All right, Mom, I'm heading out. 
In March 2006, 18-year-old Nicole is working two jobs while finishing her senior year of high school. Living the life that I do, it's very fast-paced. Nicole seemed like she was stressing off studying. Gotta go, so I will see you later. Her schedule is so hectic that she fails to take a few of her birth control pills. I would always forget. My period was irregular. She couldn't sleep. She couldn't eat. It looked like stress. I'm graduating tonight. Know, so exciting. In June, she graduates from high school, but on graduation day, she feels unusually tired and nauseous. Maybe you're pregnant. I'm on the pill. I'm not pregnant. Worried, Nicole goes to the doctor for an exam. After all, she's been skipping her birth control pills. Nicole, I've got your test results back, and it looks as though you are indeed pregnant. They took a blood test, and that's when they told me that it was positive. Finding out that I was pregnant made me think my life was going to be over. Roll your shirt up for me a little bit. Nicole has maintained her slim figure, leading her to believe she is at the beginning of her pregnancy. But two weeks later, an ultrasound reveals shocking news. It looks like you're easily five or six months along. I'm six months? I found out that I was pregnant almost at the end of my second trimester. Amazingly, Nicole has gone for six months without knowing she is pregnant. Every woman's pregnancy is different. Some women have very significant symptoms, and other women don't have any symptoms. I definitely didn't have any changes in my weight. The regular jeans that I would always wear fit me perfectly. Nicole didn't even look pregnant. Have you been doing any prenatal care? No, I haven't. Going six months without prenatal care is a concern. She immediately starts taking prenatal vitamins and watching her diet. Prenatal care is very important. Organs are developing during the third trimester, including the kidneys and the brain. And without prenatal care, it's difficult to know if these uh, developmental milestones are occurring. On December 17, 2006, four weeks before her due date, she is blindsided with violent cramps. Nicole actually said that her water broke. <sighs> I felt extreme contraction pains. I had to call 911. I think I'm in labor. <gasps> By the time Nicole gets to the hospital, she is already too dilated for an epidural. Before I even got to the labor and delivery room, they already had me pushing. You're gonna have this baby now. You need to start pushing. We need to get her to delivery. Nicole. Give her a moment. Give her a moment. Give her a moment. Oh, right. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Give me a big push. Ready? You got it. You're almost there. Come on. Here we go. 20 minutes later, Nicole gives birth to a four-week premature boy she names Jeremiah. He was five pounds, 11 ounces, but he was 24 inches long, so he was long and skinny. They test baby Jeremiah, and in spite of the lack of prenatal care, miraculously, he appears to be healthy. Being a mom by myself was a lot of work. And now, Jeremiah's here, and he's my best friend, and he makes me happy. Nicole's a good mom. She does whatever she can. You okay? Yeah. I can't tell <laughs> which one of them is the two-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In August of 2008, Two years after having Jeremiah, Nicole meets her boyfriend, Angelo. Nicole and I met and uh, fell in love with her instantly. I just knew that he was the one for me. Angelo loved Jeremiah. Although the couple has no plans to have kids, initially they don't use any birth control. I didn't think it was a big deal because I had just finished my period. I didn't think I was ovulating. Sperm have a three, maybe four day lifespan. So even though you're at the end of the cycle, if you ovulate and there's sperm present, you can still get pregnant. <laughs> Nicole gets her period that September and continues to get what she thinks is her menstruation for the next several months. Life continues to be hectic for Nicole throughout the fall and winter. Feeling really tired is a regular thing for me. What does that spell? Nicole never changed clothes sizes. Nicole never had any food cravings, never had any mood swings. In April, Nicole misses her period. 
I was a week late. I got scared. When her period is still late a few days later, she takes a pregnancy test. Angelo! Nicole is pregnant. I'm not ready to have another child now. It's positive. What? I'm only getting done with Jeremiah wearing diapers. My biggest fear was really being able to provide for my new family. Oh. We're going to measure your bundle height. The next day, Nicole's doctor estimates that she is 14 to 16 weeks pregnant. She schedules a full checkup and ultrasound for two weeks out. It was surreal to me that I was going to have another baby so soon. I can't believe the doctor said you were 16 weeks. That's halfway through my pregnancy. Just like her first pregnancy, Nicole has been pregnant for months without even knowing it. How was I going to support two kids? How am I going to balance my time with school? Everyone was pretty shocked. On April 23rd, Nicole is getting into bed when she experiences an alarming sensation. I felt a pop and a gush of water came out. I was only 14 to 16 weeks. This shouldn't be happening right now. Uh, are, you, are you okay? Like, what, what's going on? I'm, I'm freaking out here. I figured that maybe we're having a miscarriage. This, this shouldn't be happening. Could the lack of prenatal care have harmed her baby? I was clinging in to that hope that our baby would be okay. Okay. <laughs> Can you help us? What's going on? What seems to be the problem? She's pregnant. Okay. In the ER, an ultrasound reveals an image no one expects. Your baby isn't 16 weeks old. It's 34 weeks old. I'm not 34 weeks pregnant. I'm 16 weeks. I just saw the doctor last week. You are in labor. I was very frightened. <laughs> Angelo, my water broke. I think I'm in labor. <laughs> With her first baby, Nicole was pregnant for six months without knowing it. This time, she has gone full term. I was definitely not prepared to have another surprise baby. Ready? Okay. Oh, Nine, you're doing great. Here he comes. At 3.30 a.m., she gets an epidural. 10 minutes later, she's fully dilated. Eight, nine, you're doing great. I just felt like it was taking forever for him to come out. Here he comes. Last one, ready? Big push, big push. Nine. Six hours after arriving at the hospital and only one week after finding out she was pregnant, Nicole vaginally delivers a six pound, 11 ounce baby boy. I was very fearful because I didn't have any prenatal care. I didn't want my helpless baby to be sick. A whole bunch of feelings were running through my head, like fear. I was mostly fear. The doctor cuts the umbilical cord and examines the baby. The doctor made him cry, and he yelled out, he looks fine. Angelo fell in love the moment he came out. Hey, little girl. I want to be successful as a father, and I don't want to do it wrong. The relieved parents name the newborn Gabriel. Hey, buddy. So how is it possible that Nicole carried not one, but two babies without ever suspecting she was pregnant? I never knew that I was pregnant was because I didn't have regular symptoms. Since this morning? Yeah. I saw Nicole every weekend. She didn't look like she was pregnant. Looking back, I never noticed everything was normal. I didn't feel Gabriel move at all. It's quite possible that the, both pregnancies presented in perhaps a different fashion, and she just wasn't aware of what was happening. Nicole most likely got pregnant because she didn't use birth control. I got pregnant with Gabriel at the end of August. I had just finished my period. Since she was so small, her doctor estimated her pregnancy at 16 weeks, when she was really already in her third trimester. Fetal size, it depends on how much fluid's around the baby. If baby doesn't have a lot of fluid, it might measure smaller. If the baby has a lot of fluid, it might measure bigger. Today, three months later, the new family is thriving. Nicole and Angela are just a good example to me. I want to go back and change one thing. I'm happy that I went through it. I'm very blessed. They're the reason why I wake up every morning. Now that Gabriel's in my life, a lot of things have changed. I feel a lot more responsible. And Nicole and I and Jeremiah have definitely grown a lot closer. I think the birth of Gabriel 
was a happy accident because um, it kind of changed Angelo. He's made me feel, I don't know, something like a superhero, like a dad. But uh, I feel, I feel like uh, that I've done something good with my life. Right now, I think Angelo is already a good father. I mean, um, him being able to change diapers, at least, I didn't think that that could happen. My hopes for the future are to finish nursing school, hopefully get married, and move out in our own new house. My plans for the future are to be successful and happy, and be a good role model, and also a good husband hopefully in the future for Nicole. Now that I have two kids, my life is uh, definitely busier. I took the chance of taking less units at school. You know, every time we get to have family time, we do it, and as busy as we are and as frustrating as it gets sometimes, we, we, we're very comfortable. Before um, knowing that Nicole didn't know she was pregnant, I didn't think that that could happen. I look back and it's kind of unbelievable, but I know it's true because I was there when it happened. It's just the craziest story that I've ever heard or ever told. <laughs> it's a natural thing. It could happen to anyone. And you just gotta look for it. You can't ever think that it can't happen to you because it just might. We're very blessed and very happy to have made it this far, having a family of four at a very young age.